Hello everyone, my name is Christy B and welcome. I'm so excited and honored to be able to share this prophetic word with you today, which is rejoice. In my time of prayer, the Lord just began to speak over me this word and I'm so excited to share it with you because I believe it is going to bless you, it is going to give you understanding, um, and it's going to propel you into what he has for you next, amen? And so what I wanna do is just start off by reading to you what the Lord spoke to me in my time of prayer. He said, behold, I am doing a new thing, a new thing in you. The pain of yesterday will no longer haunt you or hold you back. I'm doing a new thing, a new thing in you. That which you feared will not be so, for I am doing a new thing, a new thing in you. What the spirit of death wanted to do in your life, I've turned it around for your good. Rejoice now, for I'm doing a new thing, a new thing in you. Rejoice now, for I'm turning all losses around and working it out in your favor. Rejoice now, for I am doing a new thing, a new thing in you. When the Lord spoke this over me, I took it for myself because it made sense that he was speaking this over me with thinking back to the season that I just came out of. And so when I sat down, I realized, Lord, you're repeating this, this over and over. You're saying you're going to do a new thing. You're going to do a new thing. Rejoice now. Rejoice now. And we have to understand that whenever God repeats a word or a phrase, it's because he's trying to emphasize its meaning. In the scriptures, there are plenty of places where, where phrases or sentences are repeated to get our attention and to condition our souls to come into agreement to believe and receive that which is being being said all throughout scripture you see that it's told we're told to fear not fear not for I'm with you fear there's no reason there's one scripture that says you have no reason to be afraid fear not for I'm with you and when God's repeating this command for us not to fear it's not because he has nothing else to say it's because one he knows there are going to be circumstances that come that would cause us to fear and not trust him but it's also because he wants to condition us to understand that he's with us and because he's with us, we have no reason to fear. So because God is so intentional, when he repeats something, it's because he's trying to get our attention and he wants us to come into agreement with that which he's repeating. And so over us in this season, what God is saying, he's saying, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing out with the old. I'm doing something new. And the, the command he's given us is to rejoice now. Not tomorrow, not when we see this thing come to pass. He is saying rejoice now in the hallway, in the waiting, before you see it come to fruition. Rejoice now because he is faithful to bring that thing which he's promised, which is the new, into fruition into your life. Amen. So what the Lord began to show me was that many of his children were like in this holding place. He showed me that Many of us have um, been held back by disappointments, by pains, by losses from old seasons that are one, two, three, four, five, ten, even 20 years old. There are many of us within the body of Christ who have not been able to step into the new that God has for us because the experiences of our past have told us, hey, this is not going to happen. You should just give up on that dream. You should just give up on that prophetic word. There are so many places in our souls where we've been let down, where we've experienced um, experience disappointments. And what that has done is conditioned us to actually become weary. To, to lose hope, to feel like, okay, I'm just going to feel apathetic or numb. And we don't even want to lean into what God is saying because we have this heaviness in us because of all that we've endured over time, the countless losses, um, the countless um, pains, the countless griefs. And what the Lord is saying to us today, he is saying he does not want us to be held back by the old seasons. He does not want us to be held back by the experiences of old, but he wants us to step into that new thing that he's doing for the time for the new has come and he wants us to receive that. So what the Lord is sending me here to tell you today is that you are actually free. The old does not have authority over you anymore because he has set, come to set us free, to set every captive free. Amen. He wants us to know that we can shake off the chains. He wants us to know that we can come out of those, those, those garments of grief and of heaviness. He's saying today, you're set free from every moment in your past that has held you back and that has tried to convince you that I am not good. 
For many of us, the enemy has come like the slithering slick that he is, and he has tried to convince us that God is not good. He has tried to convince us that God has forgotten about us. He has tried to convince us that the promises that God spoke were not from God. They were just a, fig, a pigment of our imagination. But the Lord has sent me to, to encourage you today and say, no, I'm watching over that word that I spoke over you and I will perform it. I will perform that which I have spoken. And so today he is saying, dance, rejoice, shake off those chains, shake off the bondage, come out of your grave clothes, put on these robes that I've set aside from you, put on the garment of praise because now is the time that I'm doing this new thing. The enemy has tried to cause the disappointments, the losses and griefs of our lives to slow us down. The image that comes up is like the the, the, the slow-mo of someone who's trying to run, right? But they get so tired that they can't even, they don't even have the strength to keep going. Many of us have felt like we just wanted to just collapse because the pain of our experiences, the countless losses that we have experienced have kind of like a venom pierced us in our souls and in our hearts and caused our hearts to be weary and weak. Today, the Lord says he sees you. Today, the Lord says he's heard every cry and every prayer. And he's saying, listen, don't give up on me for I'm here and I'm doing a new thing. That assignment of the spirit of death to literally cause us to, to, to give up hope, to give up faith, to walk away from God, to say, you know what? I'll just believe in God, but I'm not going to be obedient to him. The enemy has tried. He has been tormenting us with lies in our sleep um, while we're driving, while we're walking through conversations with our peers. He has literally tried to convince us that there is no hope, but God says that spirit of death, he is breaking its assignment off of us. And he says, you are free to live because I'm doing a new thing, a new thing today, amen? So for those who have lost their joy, for those who have lost their ability to praise, to open their mouth and speak of the goodness of God, for those who have been re weary and those who have been ready to quit, for those who have felt helpless and have been void of any hope, today the spirit of the Lord tells you rejoice for I am doing a new thing, a new thing in you. Now, what I wanted to do is also ground us in scripture, because if you've been around the Christian, any Christian circle, it's common to hear prophetic words where they're like, yes, you're, God's going to give, do a new thing. You're about to come out. He's about to break you out. And not saying that these are wrong or there's anything wrong with those prophetic words, but I want to ground you in scripture so that when the enemy tries to come and deceive you, when the enemy tries to come and um, 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 convince you of a lie, that you can take up your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and fight against the wiles of the enemy. So the first scripture I want to bring you to is Isaiah 49, 43 verse 19. It says, behold, I'm doing something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. I love that verse because it asks that question. Do you not see it? In other, verse, in other versions, it says, can you not perceive it? Are your not, eyes not able to see the new thing that God is doing? I just want to speak over you that is listening that God is doing a new thing. He is causing a way to come out of no way. He is making a way in the wilderness for you. He is causing streams to come out of the desert. I know that you've been struggling. You felt like there was no hope. You've been literally hanging on by a thread but today the lord has sent me to encourage you and tell you listen i hear you and i am doing a new thing in you amen 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 i want to take you to isaiah 61 verse 1 to 7 and i'll read it it says the spirit of the lord god is upon me it's upon me to tell you today because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has set me, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, to the oil of joy for mourning 
clothing, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees or oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory you shall boast instead of your shame. You shall have double honor and instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land, they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be theirs. The Lord is speaking to his people in this season that he has something new that he's doing. And this newness is not only going to bring wealth to your souls. This newness is not only going to bring new relationships, but this newness is going to bring joy, everlasting joy back into your, into your souls. The word of God says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And many of us have felt so weary in the waiting, but God says he is renewing joy unto us today. He is renewing joy unto us today. And, and for those who have felt heavy, who have felt weary, literally the Lord is saying, take on the garments of praise. I've set them aside for you. Praise me, rejoice now. And you're going to see your strength come up. You're going to see clarity come in your spirit. You're going to see that the heaviness that was literally weighing you down and slowing you down and confusing you, it is going to break off of you when you open your mouth and praise. Amen. So here we have this promise. The Lord has repeated over and over in the prophetic word that he gave me that he is doing something new in us, through us, and for us. So the question now is, now what? How do we become good stewards of this word, word and properly align ourselves to, and to receive the new that God has for us? In the Bible, there are countless times where God spoke something new over the Israelites and he said, listen, I'm about to do something new. I'm about to do something that you've never seen before. So I'm calling you in this moment to consecrate yourself. And that there lies out the response we ought to have. In Joshua 3, Joshua and the Israelites were about to cross over the Jordan River. And in Joshua 6, they were going to walk around the walls of Jericho and see those walls, the wall of that city come down and be able to overtake the city, right? God was literally telling the Joshua and the Israelites in Joshua 3, listen, I'm about to do something you've never seen before. Literally, he said, I'm about to do wonders before you. I'm about to take you away that you've never gone before. He was going to lead them. And though he had done it with the Red Sea, where he had parted the Red Sea, he was going to part the Jordan River and he was going to allow them to cross so that they can walk into victory and have the land that he had called them to have. But what did he do to call, to, what did he call them to do to prepare? He said, consecrate or sanctify yourselves. As we're coming into the last month and a half of 2021, it's a good time for us to slow down and to quiet ourselves before the Lord in consecration. I love to take times to process through not just what I've gone through, but to also seek the face of God concerning what he wants to do next. It is a good time for us as we are about to cross over into a new year. It is a good time for us to slow down and to consecrate ourselves to God. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but if we get quiet enough before the Lord, we can receive our marching er um our marching orders and those things are going to prepare those orders are going to prepare us for what's to come. In Joshua 3 verse 5, that's what God told the Israelites to do. He said, "Consecrate or sanctify yourselves." Because he was getting ready to flex in a way that they had never seen before. He was getting ready to make their enemy their footstool. He was getting ready to answer the prayers that um, they had been praying. He was getting ready to fulfill the promise that he had given them. So he called them to consecrate. Consecrate yourselves because the Lord is doing a new thing. That is the second part to the word that he is saying. He's doing a new thing and he wants us to rejoice. But our response to that also is to put ourselves in a place of consecration. We need to consecrate ourselves so that we can be able to perceive the new thing that God is about to do. 
In the first, first verse that I read for you, Isaiah 43, verse 19, it says, do you not see it? Can you not perceive that God is doing something new? When we consecrate ourselves, it gives us the ability to see the new thing that God wants to do. We need to also consecrate ourselves so that our heart posture can be ready to receive what God wants to do. In the, in the Bible, the Hebrew word for consecration or to consecrate, it means the following things. It means to dedicate, to keep holy, to prepare, to purify, and proclaim. Those are some of the definitions that um, consecration means in the Hebrew. The three that the Lord wants me to focus on instructing you with is dedicate, purify, and proclaim. God is calling us in this time of consecration. He's calling us to rededicate our lives to him. Our thoughts, what we meditate on, what we come into agreement with, our relationships, our finances, our time. He wants us to dedicate those things back to him. That's what he's calling us to when he says consecrate, right? He also is calling us to purify, purify ourselves of all unclean things. Yes, this means to, to, to see sinning in the ways that, that break his, breaks his heart. But he's also is calling us to take an inventory of our hearts. Many times people focus on the things, the actions that they do or the words they speak or don't speak, but their heart posture is far for away from the, the posture that God wants them to have. God wants us to take inventory of our souls, take inventory of what's hidden in us and come to him and sacrifice our hearts and purify of all those things that are, that are displeasing to him. In the Bible, David understood the importance of having a pure heart before the Lord. In Psalm 51 verse 10, he said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And then if you jump down to verse 17 in that same chapter, it says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. In this moment, when, while David is praying this prayer, he's recognizing that he needs to have a clean and a pure heart before God. So many of us can do the right things, but our heart can be full of bitterness unforgiveness, of jealousy, of anger. And these are the things that God is saying, purify yourself of, because these are the things that are going to hold you back from perceiving and receiving the new thing that I have for you. In Psalm 139, verse 23 to 24, it says, search me, O God. This is another Psalm of David. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. David in this moment was saying, okay, God, here, here's my heart. I want you to search it and I want you to try me and let me know if there's any unclean, unpure thing in me so that you can lead me in the way everlasting. If we are going to purify our hearts before the Lord in this time of consecration, he's telling us to forgive, forgive freely, forgive freely forgive freely hold no prisoners in your soul forgive even the smallest of offenses forgive freely repent for the ways that you have not forgiven that you've been bitter that you've been jealous and renounce renounce the wickedness of this world renounce the ways of the enemy that has caused us to not reflect god but to reflect him instead He's calling us to purify ourselves of all unclean things. And when we do so, we are going to position ourselves to actually be able to perceive and receive this new thing that God is doing. And then the last thing is proclaim. This brings us back to what he said, rejoice now. He didn't say wait to see the doors open. He didn't say wait to see that promise come. He said rejoice now. God is calling us to proclaim his goodness, his promises, and rejoice now. Now, I'm here to tell you that your time of mourning is over. You have been carrying these burdens for way too long. You have been tormented and plagued by these experiences, and they have convinced you of something that is not true about the God that you serve. And today the Lord says, your time of mourning is over. Open your mouth and rejoice. Sing praises to my name. Philippians 4 verse 4 says, rejoice in the Lord, always. 
again, I say rejoice. And so right now, I just want to encourage you for those who have felt so discouraged, so weary, who have felt like the same old things keep happening again. Not, this is not the season we're walking into. The Lord says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing in you. I'm doing a new thing through you. And I'm doing a new thing for you. And so Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are going to hear this word. I pray father that their hearts would come into agreement with what you have spoken over them in this season, that you are doing a new thing. The old has passed. Behold, the new has come. The old them has gone, has died with Christ and behold, they are a new creature. So God, I pray against the tormenting lies of the enemy. I pray against the memories of their old self, of those experiences of those poor choices. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that every attack of the enemy on their mental being, Father, oh God, that it would cease fire right now. I pray, God, for those who have been mourning, those who have been carrying grief for years, God, I pray that in this season that they would open their mouth and rejoice for the time for new has come. You have heard them. You see them. You are God. You are El Roy, the God that sees. You saw Hannah when she prayed and asked for you to open her womb and you did that. And God, you are saying over us, you are the God that sees us. No, you have not forgotten about us, but you have been waiting for the opportune time. Your word says, God, that you are watching over your word. You know the best time for your word to come to fruition. Uh, and it's not a second before then that it will come to pass. So God, I thank you. I thank you that for your children, you are speaking over them, that the time is now that the new has come, that they can shake off, oh God, the chains of bondage, that can, they can shake off the old memories and the things of old, that they can come out of agreement with the narratives of these cycles that they have been in, God. And I thank you that you are breaking every cycle, that you are, Father God, setting them free from cycles of bondage, from cycles of low self-esteem, from cycles of depression, from cycles of poverty. In Jesus' name, I declare, Lord God, as you are doing this in me, you are doing this in your body. You are causing us to come into agreement with what you are doing in this time. And the time now is for the new. You are doing a new thing. You are making a way out of no way. You are making a way in the wilderness where there was no way before. The God who sees us is making a way where there was no river, no place for sustenance. You are bringing rivers to the wasteland. God, I thank you that the time for mourning is over. The time for the tears is over. The time for grieving is over, but now it is a time for us to rejoice. So God, I pray uh, that father, oh God, for the spirit of heaviness, that you would give us the garment of praise, uh, that we would open our mouths and say that you are good, uh, that we would open our minds and mouths and say that you are awesome, uh, that you are faithful, that you see us, uh, that you are near to us, that you've never failed us, uh, that you are good, uh, that you are good, that you are perfect in all of your ways. Uh, I declare right now, now in the name of Jesus, uh, every attack of the enemy over their ability to praise you, uh, every attack of the enemy on their ability to open their mouths and speak well of you, uh, it is broken and it is st it stops now in Jesus' name, uh, for your people are free. Uh, the bondage that was holding them, that was um, keeping them um, um, in a place, Father, oh God, that is lower than the standard that you have for them. Uh, Father, you are breaking that off and causing them to run. You are causing them to dance. Uh, you are causing them to come up in hope. Uh, you are causing their faith to increase. Uh, you are causing their ability to see uh, and to plan and to run uh, and to build. Father, you are doing a new thing in us. And so God, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that those who hear this word, uh, that they would be encouraged, Father, to come into agreement with what you have spoken and to consecrate themselves in this time. I pray, God, that they would not think it's strange uh, if they have deeper desires to wake up earlier and pray, to stay up later and pray, uh, to seek you in your word, uh, to turn their phone off and to, to log off of social media, to not go out every night. But God, uh, it is not strange if in this season uh, they feel you tugging on your, their hearts. God, you are calling us to consecration. You are calling us to purify ourselves. You are calling us to sanctify ourselves. You are calling us to proclaim your goodness. And God, you are calling us to come into agreement with what you have said. So Father, I pray that those who hear this word, 
that they would feel the fire of the Holy Spirit come upon them and that they would rejoice always in the name of their keeper, in the name of the one who sees them, in the name of the one who knows them by name. You have not forgotten us, but you are doing this new thing in us, through us, and by us, God. There are some who are going to get new ministry um, 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 opportunities and instructions. There are some who are going to shift careers. There are some who are going to move to different cities. There are some who are going to shift to different churches. God, you are doing a new thing. You are repositioning us. I pray against, uh, Father, oh God, the fear of change right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray, God, those, oh God, who are afraid of change, that they would not come against uh, what you are doing in this season for the new might cause them uh, to make a step that is uncomfortable. But God, I pray uh, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that they would yield to the new that you are asking them to yield to, that they would make the moves and the steps that you call them to. And God, that they would trust you because the time for new is now. Amen and amen. God bless you. I pray that you are blessed by this. I pray that you are encouraged and no longer agreeing with the experiences that you've had that have told you that God has forgotten about you. If there's anything I know, is that God is one who does not forget about his children. David said it. He said, I was young and now I'm old and I have never seen the righteous forsaken. If you are the righteous, if you are one that has been purchased by the blood of Christ, if you're one that is set apart and sanctified to God, I'm telling you now, the time for the new thing is now. He is doing it and he will complete it. Amen. So you all be blessed. I pray that you press on, that you press in, and you do not let go of the hand of the one who is leading you because he's faithful. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Hey y'all, this is Christy B and I want to thank you so much for watching. If this video in any way was a blessing to you, go ahead and click that like button below and feel free to share it with someone that you know and love. And if you'd like to stay up to date on when new videos drop, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. I want to encourage you to press in and press on. God has so much more for you than what you've seen, but you have to trust him and lean into what he has for you in order to get there. Y'all be blessed and I'll see you next time. Peace.